What's up everyone, I'm Nick. In this video, we're talking about buttons and it's exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna put some buttons on the screen and when users click on these buttons, we're gonna perform some actions. So I'm gonna first show you guys a couple different ways to implement these buttons with a couple different initializers and then we're gonna jump into formatting the buttons to make them look really cool and give you some real world examples for buttons that you can actually use in your apps. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna cover buttons. Let's create a new file just for the code in this video. Right click the navigator, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view and let's call it buttons bootcamp. So buttons are pretty simple. So I'm gonna quickly show you how they work, how we can implement them, and then maybe two or three ways that we can format them to make them look really cool. So go ahead and click resume on that canvas and let's get started. And as you probably could have guessed, we're gonna delete this text and we're just gonna start typing button. And buttons are actually called button in Swift UI, so super easy to remember. Let's open the parentheses and we have a couple completions. And today we're gonna look at these two completions, the one with the title of a string protocol and the one with an action and a label. Let's start with the string protocol because that's the easier one. Let's hit enter on that. And on this button, basically there are two parts. There is the title, which is looking for a string. And we know what strings are, so all we need to do is add a quote. And within our quotes, let's just type in whatever we want the button to actually say. So let's do press me. And in the action, this is what's gonna happen when we actually click on this button. Hit enter on the action, it will open the brackets for us. And in this code section, whenever we press this button, this is going to execute. And you can actually, if you press play on the live preview, you can actually click on the button and it kind of highlights when it's pressed down. And when we click this button, whatever code is in here would execute. So let's update this view now so that we can get a title that we can change when we press a button. So I'm gonna put this button into a V stack. At the top of the V stack, I'm gonna put a text. And right now we're just gonna say title. So we can see it on our screen. Let's add some spacing to the V stack to make it look better. And now this title, let's make a variable. So up outside the body, let's put let title type string equals, and we're gonna say this is my title. Let's get rid of the text right in here and just reference our title variable. So now this title is referencing this. And now when we press this button, we wanna change what this title says. So we're gonna set self.title equal to button was pressed. Now we're gonna run into a quick error message saying that basically we can't change title because title is a let variable. A let variable basically means it's never going to change. So all we have to do is make this a variable that can change. So in Swift UI, we do at state var, and now it is a variable and we are watching the state, meaning it might change. In the next video in this series, we're actually gonna dive into states and really cover them in detail. So it's okay if you don't understand this right now, but just know that this title now has the ability to change. So when we press this button, we're gonna set the title equal to button was pressed. If we resume the canvas, and I click the button, right now it says this is my title, press me, button was pressed. So our button is working. Now I wanna show you guys the other initializer for a button. So in this version, the initializer asks for a string. So all we can really do is add text to this button. And it works, but it's not very pretty. In the other initializer, so if I call button, open the parentheses, and go down to the one with the action and label. If I hit enter on that, we now have our action section, which I will press enter. And I'm gonna go in between these brackets and hit enter again. So this is what's gonna happen when we press this button. So when we press this button, let's do self.title equals button uh, number two was pressed. And this time, instead of just asking for a string, it asks for a label. 
and a label is a little more convenient because it can be whatever kind of view we want it to be. So we can add a text, we can add an H stack, we can add a shape or an image, whatever we want in here. So this is a little more dynamic and the one that I use in my code a lot. So right now it just says button. Let's test it out. It says button here when we click it, button number two was pressed. And now we can switch between the first one and the second one and they're both working. So this is the basics of how buttons work. Uh, basically you have the label or the title. So here it's just a string. Here it is whatever kind of whatever label we want it to be. And then you have the part where the action is when you actually click on the button. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Now before we end this video, I'm going to show you some formatting for buttons to make them look pretty cool. And the first thing you notice is that buttons by default have that blue and that's, and that's the like iOS default blue for buttons and clickable things. And we can change that blue on a button by simply calling dot accent color. And then we can change that from the default blue to red and the accent color will by default turn to red. Now in the second button, we have this label option where we can customize whatever we want the button to look like. So now we're going to create a couple different buttons using really cool labels. So first, let's change the title of this to maybe be save. And we'll call dot uppercase so that it's uppercase save. Let's change the font to headline, the font weight to semi bold. Let's change the foreground color to white. So now we have white text. And let's give it a background color of color dot blue. So let's put the background on two lines here. Before we add this background, let's give it some padding. So let's do dot padding. And then let's give it some extra horizontal padding. So we'll do dot padding down to the edges dot horizontal. And we'll give it maybe 20. On this background, let's add some corners. So let's do dot corner radius of 10. And then let's give that background a nice shadow. So we'll do dot shadow and we'll give that a 10. And already you can see how we have a nice save button, which looks a lot better than the default button that we had. I wanna show you guys a couple more buttons that will, might look pretty cool. So I'm gonna scroll down here Below this button, I'm going to add another button, open the parentheses, and this will be an action and label again. Inside this action, let's do self.title equals button number three. It doesn't really matter. You guys understand how the action works. And in this label, this time, let's add a circle. Let's give it a frame with a width a width of maybe 75, a height of 75, and we don't need the alignment. Bef actually, before we add the frame, we should give it a fill. Let's make it color.white. And then after the frame, let's add a shadow with a radius of 10 as well. So now we can see our button starting to come in. And on top of this circle, let's add an overlay. In the overlay content, let's add an image with a system name of heart.fill. Let's give this a font of large title. Let's give this a foreground color. Let's do color, maybe color literal. And we'll double click that white and let's do maybe a dark red. So I'm gonna click other and I like this dark red here. And this might be like a button that you see on like Tinder or something where they click the heart button. And that only took us maybe a couple seconds to create. And let's do one more cool button. Again, guys, I'm moving fast here through these formatting because this is all stuff that we've covered in previous videos. We did overlays and shadows and frames and fills. And that's why I've done this course in this order. So now we're getting into more complex views. We're going to do one more. Let's add a button open the parentheses, go down to action and label. Let's change the text to maybe uh, finish. I'm just making it up as we go here. Um, let's make it uppercase again. 
Let's change the font to maybe caption. We'll do a smaller one. Let's change the foreground color to gray. Let's also make it a little thicker because it's so small. So let's call it dot bold. That looks better. And then let's add a dot background. And in this background, instead of just adding a uh, color, let's add a capsule. And we want the capsule to be bigger than the text. So I'll zoom in here for you guys. Let's add some padding before we add the background. So we'll do dot padding. And I want to make the horizontal a little bigger. So we'll do dot padding dot horizontal. And we'll stack that with an additional 10. So we have two paddings that are stacked on top of each other. And let's take this blue capsule and format it quick. And I've done a video on shapes in the past. So this should not be new to you guys. Let's add a stroke. And I'm going to go down to the completion that has a that has content and line width. So let's make the line color dot gray so it matches our text. And let's set the width to maybe uh, 3.0. That's a little thick. Let's do 2.0. All right, guys, so real quickly, I'll zoom out here on the code so you can see it a little better. Um, here we go. And it looks like in that last button, let's set the self.title equal to button number four. And when we click play on this preview, we can now change the title by clicking all of these buttons. And we have some pretty cool uh, formatting. So we have that default just text formatting where we change the color. This button, which is very, very common in apps, is just a nice rounded corners. We have a circular button with an image on it. And then we used a nice capsule in the background. We used a shape with a stroke style to get a really cool finish button. So four quick implementations. Now you know how to use buttons. And in the next video, we're going to go into detail on how this state variable works. So we can really be start becoming experts at changing the data and updating our views when things are clicked and pressed. So thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I will see you in the next video.